This is the St. Louis Cemetery 1 and 2 and the Basin Street Station in New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans is known for many things, but some of the most iconic sites in the city are its cemeteries. Mark Twain called New Orleans cemeteries as the city of the dead because the upper burial tombs look like clustered houses as in a city. There are actually three St. Louis cemeteries in New Orleans, but the oldest cemetery is St. Louis Cemetery No. 1, which happens to be the closest to the French Quarter. In this video, we'll cover the St. Louis Cemetery 1 and 2 and the Basin Street Visitor Center. Welcome to HitFig. If you're a travel enthusiast, then join our community by subscribing to this channel. This is the New Orleans, Louisiana Travel Guide series. This episode is the Basin Street Visitor Center and St. Louis Cemeteries 1 and 2 in New Orleans Travel Guide. On a warm sunny day, we drove to Basin Street Station Visitor Center, which is located at 501 Basin Street, New Orleans, Louisiana. Basin Street Station once served as a center of economic and cultural activities as well as a transportation hub as a center of five railway stations in the early 20th century. We took I-10 and took View Curé exit. Watch for the signs for the visitor center. Free parking is difficult to find in this area. Most available parking are in the parking lots or garages. We parked in the Basin lot adjacent to Basin Street Station, which is about $10 for two hours. Here's an inside tip. There is limited free 10 minute parking in front of Basin Street Visitor Center if you just want to make a quick bathroom break. If you don't have a car, you can also get to the cemeteries by purchasing the Hop On Hop Off Bus Tour and stopping at Stop 5. Hop On Hop Off Bus Tours are especially convenient in New Orleans to get to all the tourist attractions. The first floor of the Basin Street Station is a visitor center and is open daily from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. When you enter through the main doors, You'll see the cafe on the left-hand side which offers to-go items. Basin Street Cafe is open daily from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. The restrooms you'll find on the right-hand side. By the way, the Basin Street Station Visitor Center is also air-conditioned. There's also a staff visitor information desk. You can also find community exhibits, a performance venue, gift shop, and a walking tour kiosk where you can Book a, a walking tour for the St. Louis Cemetery No. 1. For your information, a guided tour is the only way to get into St. Louis Cemetery 1 unless you got a family member buried there. Walking tours depart from Basin Street Station Visitor Center and across the street to St. Louis Cemetery 1. Buy or present your Hop On Hop Off sightseeing pass at the ticket desk inside to join any of the daily tours. Tours are first come, first serve. No reservations are required. Daily tours depart at 9.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 11.30 a.m., 12.30 a.m., and 1.30 p.m. Tickets are $20 at the Basin Street Station or $15 when you purchase a hop-on, hop-off three-day pass. Here's a tip. Free Tours by Foot Guides offers you a name your own price tour of St. Louis No. 1 every morning. Please check on their website for more information. St. Louis Cemetery 1 was consecrated in 1789. The city's original cemetery was St. Peter Cemetery, which was relocated to the outskirts of the city at St. Louis Cemetery No. 1. The barriers at St. Peter's used to be below ground, which during flooding uncovered bodies. The St. Louis Cemetery 1 graves began using above ground monument tombs, which reflected the European Caribbean traditions of New Orleans. Inside Cemetery 1, there are stacked wall grave sites above ground monuments which house oven vaults containing the remnants of family members or a society group like New Orleans Musicians Tomb. You can also get buried here for $40,000 near the Voodoo Queen Marie Laveau, Homer Plessy known for the landmark U.S. Supreme Court case, and the future resting place of actor Nicolas Cage. In its early years, there were also separate sections for enslaved people, free people of any race, and Protestants. The Protestant section is still walled off from the rest of the cemetery. Sorry we don't have any video for cemetery number one. No video is allowed. Photography is okay inside though. Once we finished our visit, we got into our car and found street parking near St. Louis Cemetery number two. 
St. Louis Cemetery 2 is located three blocks from St. Uh, Louis Number 1 on Claiborne Avenue. It's open daily from 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 quickly filled up due to cholera, and so the second cemetery, St. Louis Number 2, was consecrated in 1823. St. Louis Cemetery No. 2, which was consecrated in 1823, is the resting place of notable New Orleans jazz and blues musicians such as Danny Barker and Ernie K. Doe. It's also the second oldest cemetery in New Orleans. St. Louis Cemeteries 1 and 2 are on the National Register of Historic Places. Many of the great monuments here that you see hold many generations of one family. How did they get so many bodies in one monument, you ask? Well, many of the monuments have an oven section. After a body is put in above ground monument, it is left undisturbed in the grave for a period of one year and one day. At that point, the remains would have been disintegrated by the heat of the sun, and then it's pushed back uh, to the back of the tomb or collected in a muslin bag to make room for another body. The St. Louis Cemetery II is separated by three sections across the street from one another and takes up three city blocks bordered by North Claiborne Avenue, St. Louis, North Robertson, and Iberville streets. Although not strictly enforced in this cemetery, the social distinctions that existed uh, were still carried into death. The designation of sections for different religious faiths and ethnic groups were also um, followed here. A particularly noteworthy tomb is the Gothic Revival tomb for the Caballero family in 1860, which has a trefoil um, arch in each gable, crockets, and finials. You'll notice that the tombs are neatly aligned along straight avenues, and many are surrounded by um, cast iron fences. St. Louis Cemetery, too, especially looks like a small city. Some of the most beautiful tombs in this cemetery were designed by J. N. B. de Puy, who probably introduced temple-fronted tombs to New Orleans. Each of the cemetery squares are surrounded by high brick walls lined with wall vaults, one of them uh, de Puy's simple tomb. There are no restrooms inside the cemetery. Make sure to bring water and wear sunscreen, a hat, and good walking shoes. Please be respectful when visiting and do not touch the tombs to preserve their longevity. There is no protection from the sun, so go early in the morning or later in the day or otherwise take precautions. St. Louis Cemetery 1 and 2 are definitely unique and elegant tombs to visit. These attractions will take you two or more hours depending on your interest. Happy travels! Go to hipfig.com for more information or go to our Hipfig Travel Channel on YouTube and be sure to subscribe for regular updates.